Welcome, everybody, to this developer live talk about content and commerce with Adobe Experience Manager in the cloud. My name is Markus Haag, and I am working for the AEM commerce team. And actually, we are the team which built this integration, what we call commerce integration framework, which will be the majority of this talk today when we do a deep dive into the AEM commerce on the Experience Manager. So the menu for today, basically, I will give you a quick intro into AM content and commerce and what we do actually mean by AM commerce. Then we will do a deep dive into the technical topics, which will start with AM commerce on a cloud service. I will show you how you actually get onboarded, it, get your project on AM cloud service started. And once you have the project started, obviously the next logical step is you want to do also developing for this project. So you need to set up your local development environment, and I will show you this as well. Then let's jump into the topics. All right, so AM Content Experience Manager, Content Commerce, what do we actually mean with that? It's actually quite simple. We mean the box here in the middle. Uh, I will start with the left, which is AM Experience Manager. The Digital asset management and content management solution we all know. On the right, we have our commerce engine. We from Adobe obviously would prefer it is uh, Magento or Adobe Commerce. However, the integration framework is agnostic and works with other non Adobe third party solutions as well. And in the middle, the piece which basically glues these both boxes together, this is what we call the commerce integration framework. The idea behind is that we provide a tool for you out of the box, which allows you to integrate these solutions and providing on the one hand, all the components, the building blocks you need for building out your storefront experience with AEM. And on the other hand, we provide the tooling for your business users and your marketers uh, in as part of the AEM admin, which allow them to build the immersive and nice AM commerce experience. So we provide consoles, pickers, etc. I come to this in a second. For this, uh, and this is basically the focus for this talk, the box in the middle. So what's actually in that box? If you open the tool set, we provide you with three basically modules or three sort of building blocks. First is what we call the Adobe AEM Venya, which is our reference store. It's a B2C uh, online store example, which you can take for a project as a reference and start a project from there. This project is built using the Commerce Core Components, which is a set of core components. And if you are familiar with the site's core components, this is basically nothing new for you, except they are built for the commerce use cases. And in the middle here, as I already teased, we have the commerce offering tools, which is a set of tools we provide as part of the SIF add-on and the integration framework for your business users, which allow them to build commerce experiences, work with the product catalog as part of the AM admin offering. So one of one step by the other. So the reference storefront. As I said, it's basically a storefront project which you can use for your for your personal project as an accelerator, as a starting point, as a reference to just look in or easily simply to just do demos. It's built on top of a B2C use case. So it has everything what typically B2C store has, browsing the shop, navigating the product, the shopping cart, mini cart, user login and out, my account, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a full functional working e-commerce store, which you can use in for smaller project, you just can really use it one-to-one, -one, customize it and go live with it. It's built with using the core components and everything is public open source available on GitHub. Speaking about the core components, this is the second building block. The core components is a set of commerce related core components. They are part of the AM core component library. So if you've seen the core component library, basically if you scroll down in the navigation, there's an entire section about commerce and this has all the core components we provide. They are built in a way that they are reusable, that you can build your custom components on top of them by either not customizing them at all or with simple customization. That And customization is a good topic here. Actually, we have a talk tomorrow by my colleague Mark Becker, and he will focus and show you how you can use these components in technical detail and actually how you can really customize them from simple customization and just doing a little bit of styling to 
uh, more advanced customizations like getting additional commerce data from your commerce backend, optimizing the GraphQL queries, extending the GraphQL queries, etc., and even implementing own custom GraphQL queries at all. The components itself, they are built from out of the box for internationalization, so it's already built in, and also the data layer, what actually was shown in the session before, is also built in already, so it's all available out of the box. And the third box, the offering components, so what we provide as part of CF for cloud is a set of tools and a deep integration with the AM admin and the AM offering, which means we provide a back uh, a backend commerce console where your business users can quickly navigate the product catalog, view all the products in the catalog. It's integrated with the AM backend offering search. So the AM uni search, omni search basically allows you to search for product data as well. And if, the, if you just type for a certain term, it will find everything, products, pages, assets, whatever is in your repository. And it's integrated with the AM product page editor and the experience fragments editor, which means you can easily just drag and drop components onto an experience fragment or onto a page. And it's easy to build experience based using these components you have built using CIF. That's for the quick introduction. Switching gears to the cloud service now, and let me start with the architecture explaining how the architecture looks like. I will start with Magento on the first slide and have another slide which is slightly different than this one for non-Magento third-party solutions like Hypers, for example. So this picture uh, shows the data flow. The uh, user enters your website. The user enters the website using his browser. This is basically the first step. Uh, the browser accesses the AM URL, and the AM URL is requesting to render, uh, to deliver an experience. If that was rendered before, it can be delivered by the dispatcher or by the CDN, like any other AM page, nothing special here. If it's not cached, then the request goes to the AM publish. On the AM publish, if there are components which require commerce data, this commerce data is loaded from the commerce solution, Magento in this case, via a GraphQL query. So we do a graphical call to Magento. The query depends on the component itself, and it's customizable. Magento returns as the graph, the graph. We get the data out of the rendered experience, send it back. So not nothing really special here. Uh, another use case in data flow is we also have client-side components. Client-side components means JavaScript components. The way how we distinguish here is basically for everything which is more static, from data nature, like a product catalog or a product PDP, uh, we try to build them by using server-side components so they can be rendered by the AM server and we can ca easily cache them. For data which is more dynamic and or personalized, we use typically client-side components, which means the shopping cart, for example, or the entire My Account pages use client-side components. And here, the data flow is basically directly from the browser executing GraphQL queries against the Magento backend. However, the request can be routed via the CDN and AM dispatcher. We provide a, a simple reverse proxy here. Uh, for use cases where you don't want to expose the backend URL or simply also for a uh, course reason that you have not to fiddle around with multiple endpoints and multiple URLs in the browser. One type of request is a little bit special, and that's the AM offer, because the AM offer actually is able to see additional backend data from the Magento backend, because the offer can do requests and retrieve staged and not live data. A typical use case is simply you prepare a new product launch, which is maybe in the next month, and you want, want to already prepare your product experience for this launch. The offer can already see this product, even they are not on the public website yet. Can prepare your marketing pages. You can do customized PDP with extra marketing content using experience formats, for example, or write blog postings using this product data on already. But you cannot put them live. You can only put them live if the product is actually set to published on the backend as well. This is how the data flow looks like for Magento. If it's a non-Magento, e-commerce solution like uh, SAP Hybris or Salesforce Commerce Cloud, for example. We add one extra puzzle piece here, and this is the 
related to the backend. On the AEM side of things and on the SIF part and the SIF components, nothing will change. It's exactly the same components, exactly the same OSGI bundles and components we deploy to AEM. For the backend, however, we need this sort of API translation because the third party commerce has a different own proprietary API, which is not really compatible with our GraphQL queries. So we need to do some mapping. The solution we use here for mapping and we, is the Adobe IO runtime platform, which is Adobe's serverless platform. And we implement basically a set of uh, runtime functions written in JavaScript, which allows you to do the API translation and the object mapping between our API and our data format and the back office, uh, the back commerce backend solution. So the data flow here will on the AM side, it will basically look the same. On the backend side, it will slightly be different. So first, the AM or the browser request comes in now to the GraphQL endpoint on IO runtime. And actually, one thing to add here, it doesn't necessarily need to be IO runtime. If you have a custom platform and you want to implement these functions, for example, for your homegrown in-house e-commerce solution, which is not available off the shelf, you can also use an alternative platform. So we have customers using MuleSoft or AWS Lambda for this, for example. The general concept is still the same. So the GraphQL query and the request comes in. We provide a set of dispatcher actions. They figure out how to basically decompose the GraphQL query and map these into the backend request. So the GraphQL resolver will invoke a function which is doing the work calling the backend commerce system, waiting until the result is coming back. Once the result is coming back, it's transferring and mapping the data object from the commerce API to our common GraphQL schema. There might be multiple requests, also multiple requests in, in parallel. So once these are all finished, the GraphQL object hierarchy basically gets assembled and then sent back to the client. As I said, the rest of the part of the data flow on the AM side is basically the same like before. This is for the high-level overview of the entire architecture. One thing I would like to deep dive now a little bit is into the CIF components and how these components are working. So this is a little bit high-level architecture of the components. And if you, you see, you use site score components as well. As I said already, our components work very similar. We follow actually the same concepts so using the same patterns like the sites core components already do since quite a lot of years, except the use case difference. And since our use case requires commerce data, we need to do backend calls to the commerce system. For that, we introduced two new building blocks here for the SIF components. The low level part is a GraphQL client. We provide a GraphQL client, which is basically a very generic boilerplate OSGI bundle which is added on top of the HTTP request to give you all the nice tooling to do GraphQL queries. And you can do post requests, get requests, et cetera. And the GraphQL client is able to transform also your low, raw low-level JSON strings, which gets from the backend into Java objects, which is nice and handy because as a Java developer, you typically don't want to fiddle it around with large strings which contain your query and then navigating large JSON object trees. You want to work with Java models. For this, we provide already a pre-generated set of Java data models. Actually, we are not writing them by hand. We're just taking the Magento GraphQL model itself, uh, the schema, and generating this model out of the schema. So this is, is a second bundle we provide. And if you use a standard Magento deployment, this will work out of the box. If you have customized your Magento data model or you have a third-party solution with extra classes here as well, this is easily possible to generate your own model classes and basically put them next to it as well. So you can work with both. You don't need to regenerate the entire object tree because the standard classes can stay the same. And for your customization and extensions, you put your own classes next to it. And these core components are then used similar to the size components by your project. Either you have simple proxy components, which are, don't add extra logic, you can put your styling extensions, your own HTL script, et cetera, there. And ambitiously, you have also always the option to build your entire custom component, which also can use the data model in the GraphQL client. For the client side part, these are components a little bit next to it. They are also part of the project we deliver as CIF core components. However, these are client side components they are building using Re React and JavaScript. 
And we share a lot of logic and code here with the Magento team, which they use for the Magento PWA to not duplicate a lot of code and a lot of effort. These components are also part of the project and the same patterns apply to the site's core components, the classic cell components as well. So you can style them as you need and you also can extend them. That's on the architecture. And now let's deep dive into the cloud service part actually. So how do we get started with AM as a cloud service? Actually, what you need to start a project for commerce AM on the cloud is basically three relatively simple steps. And if you used AM cloud before, it's not that much new. So first you need to be onboarded to commerce, then you need to connect your AM environment to the commerce solution. And then yeah, like for any other project, you need to deploy your project via cloud manager. So let's go step by step. First step, the onboarding is actually a two-step flow. The first step is the entitlement and the provisioning. The entitlement is based on AM sites. So you need to be customer of AM sites and AM commerce is basically an add-on to AM sites. So you need to have an AM size license and entitlement already or get both in the same time together. The entitlement is done by the Adobe team. For customers, easiest would be reaching out to your sales representative. And for partners to your partner manager, they can help you here. Adobe is doing then the entitlement. And once this is done, the provisioning can start. And the SIF add-on, which is basically the product part of the SIF for your project, will be deployed on the next time you run a pipeline. And this will happen automatically. You don't need to do anything. Once you have the entitlement, the second step, which needs to be done, you need to connect your environments. The first time we do this, basically, Adobe is helping you here, and Adobe is doing the step. If you provide the endpoint of your commerce system, Adobe can do it. However, this is actually a self-service part, and you can do it either by your own. You can change it later by your own as your needs. For example, if you spin up a few development environments, and you remove them and add new development environments later, it's always easy to configure them to the right Magento endpoint or the commerce system. One thing to note here is the entitlement itself is per Cloud Manager and AM Cloud Program, which means once you have the entitlement for the program, all the environments in this program, meaning all the developer sandboxes, the stage and the product environment get automatically get the zip add-on. There's no need to do this per each environment. And if you create a new development environment, uh, it will automatically get the add-on as well, as long as it's part of this program. To do the self-service part, this is basically quite st easy step because it's actually only one mandatory uh, configuration which is needed, which is connecting AM to your backend system. And this is setting a cloud manager variable, which is basically an environment variable, which is automatically injected into your AM environments. The concept is generic and other solutions use this as well. And you maybe even have used it before. And for commerce, we just require you to set one variable, which is called commerce endpoint. This is pointing to your GraphQL solution. This can be a Magento uh, GraphQL. This can be an endpoint, as I showed before, on IO one time, or whatever custom GraphQL endpoint you have for your commerce solution. As long as it's mapping our GraphQL schema, it will work. Actually, for Magento, there is a second optional configuration, which is providing an API token. It's needed for the AM offer to access the preview and the stage data because the preview data is typically not publicly simply accessible. It's always protected, and you need to have extra rights on the backend system to see these staged and non-published data. Once this is done, the next step is running a pipeline. And running a pipeline is basically you provide a project code as part of your AM cloud service project. Once you push this to the Git repo, the pipeline basically will start and will start with step one, which is a custom build. The Maven build, it's building a project and assuming the Maven build succeeds, the pipeline will move to the next step, which is building the AM basic image. And the new part here is that on top of the AM base release image, we will put the add-on. This is done automatically before, and this is done before the custom code is deployed. So the custom code can assume uh, the add-on is always there, and you can have dependencies to the add-on code if needed. Uh, and we do, do this as well because we share a code between the offering and your project code, and you can use this, these dependencies already in your custom code because you can assume it's always deployed automatically and before your code gets deployed. 
the process of the add-on is using base it's using a sling, a sling feature archive it's not custom to comments it's basically all the adobe add-ons provided on am cloud using the same pattern here once this image is built it can be deployed in step two to your stage and development environments and in zooming you are happy with the result everything works you can push this forward doing additional tests doing the performance audit and everything is fine it can be deployed to, to production so the pipeline if you work with am cloud before and cloud manager is not really special especially the, the second part here of the offering tools this is totally transparent to you in the case there are any issues for example it's easy to get the cloud manager lock and in the cloud manager lock once you push the project you can see the step where the sift part is part of the assembly so if you check the cloud manager build image lock there's actually a step uh, or a box a section called feature archive tool and in this there is a step about processing the sift add-on and here you will see which part of the add-on which bundles get deployed which packages are deployed and actually what version exactly is used this might be handy for debugging purposes but if everything works nicely you normally won't really need this part and with this and pushed if you have your push to project and the pipeline succeeds you're actually ready to use your am project on the cloud next step would be doing local development and changing this project changing this project requires you to also have three basic steps you need your am development environment locally which is the am cloud sdk plus the sift add-on both are available on software download and i show you this in a second Next, again, same pattern, you connect it to your commerce system, and then you deploy your project into your local environment. I will do these steps now in a quick demo locally here on my environment to guide you through this. However, the first step, downloading everything, I already did this before. As I said, it's all available in software download, and you need these two packages, the AM SDK. We always recommend to get the latest, and the same applies to the SIF add-on. Always just get the latest here and download everything. Step two would be connecting it to your Magento or third-party commerce system. For local development, you can do whatever works best for your use cases. You can use AM Commerce Cloud or Magento Cloud environment if you already have this and a custom of it. For local development, also just a local Magento or a virtual environment would work. And for the third-party uh, solution, basically, applies the same and depends a little bit how you actually build the integration layer. Let me now switch to my consoles and IDE to show you this in, in detail. I have AEM SDK already up and running here, but I show you what I actually did. So I have a second step here and I'm now, let me go to one leg. I got the AEM SDK. Actually I got one last week. So this is not the really newest, but it's pretty new just a few days old. I already inserted everything and moved uh, two copies into my offer and published. For the demo, I only need the offer, but I have a publish here as well. And in the offer, I run the am command with a jar file to unpack the, the quick start jar, which is basically not starting am. It's just unpacking everything, which generates me a CX quick start slash install folder. And in that folder, I put the SIF add-on. The SIF add-on, you get this downloaded as a SIF as well, and you can answer it wherever you want. The only thing you need to be uh, careful here is the SIF file actually contains two .far file, which stands for feature archive. And there's one for the author and one for the publish. Just make sure you pick the right one for the environment you spin up locally. Once this is copied, you are actually ready from the AM side. The only thing is, left over is the connection to Magento. And for this, the, you need to set these environment variables. And for the local SDK, it's as easy as this. It's just a local operating system environment variable. So I exported here my commerce endpoint, pointing to my commerce solution. And after that, I just started my AM. And what you get there is basically this. So this is the AM starting screen. And if you worked with the AM SDK before, you might already notice one tiny little difference, which is the commerce icon. So on the plain SDK, there's no commerce icon. If the SIF add-on is installed, you already see the commerce icon for the commerce console. So this is basically the first check. If you did everything right, then you should see the commerce icon. 
And the second step is if you click the comment icon, you should see your catalog. So I can already, without any additional configuration, I can already navigate my product catalog. That's why we provide a tiny little default configuration which binds the Magento or your commerce system with the default catalog. So if you have a default catalog, and typically Magento already provides this out of the box, uh, the binding will be there and it will work. So you can already navigate the product catalog, navigate the category tree, see the product. Once the backend is loading, hopefully, you can see the product details for all the products. That's already done, and that's part of the offering tool. Also, the integrated search, etc., already will work. However, if we go to the sites console, we have no project deployed. It's empty because I didn't deploy my project. That's what I will do in the next step. Uh, for this one, I will use the Venya reference store. If you already deployed something on AM Cloud, you typically would check out your Cloud Manager Git repo and use that project. If you start from scratch, you have basically two options. You can use the AM archetype and bootstrap an empty project. The AM archetype recently got extended to include ZIF as well. So there is an option to include commits, which will in include you all with the dependencies you need for CIF, and it will include you all the proxy components. I now install the Venya project, which usually takes around about one minute, and I will use this minute to show you a little bit of project structure. So switch to my IDE. This is the same project here. If you, and as you see here, and you're familiar with it, it's a classic AM project layout. It has a UI apps, UI content. All the client side components are in the UI storefront, et cetera. And in the UI apps project, the project name is called Venya, so we have our components. These all the sites for components, and there's one additional folder which is called Commerce, and within this, we have the proxy components for all our CIF related components. So everything is already set up for me. And the same you will get if you deploy the AM project using the AM archetype. Now let's switch to my console and see if it's already deployed or it's still taking a few seconds. Then let's wait until this is ready. And then we can switch back to AM and see already the project working. Okay, this hopefully is now done. All right, this is almost the end. This was the last package to be deployed. I think we can ignore the tests here and already go to AM. So if I reload my sites console, I already see my project deployed. So I have now a very simple project. This is the Venya store in a very light version. And let me just open the home page for the sake of the demo. I won't go into the detail for the project because you can just get it from GitHub and play with its own. And the homepage should render quickly. And if I switch to preview, I'm already in preview mode. I can, as you can see, I can already navigate the site. So these are the categories from my backend. They are imported automatically. I do not need to do anything extra special here. It's already connected with a preview con with a pre-config as I said, if you use the default store, I can navigate my catalog now and my storefront and already preview my website. Pick a few products, add them to the cart, and I could actually go to the entire checkout, which I'll put that step I will basically skip now for this demo. Switching back to my slides. So what we have seen now, I installed the add-on. It's already here, and if you get the slides later, it's all all the steps are in here for convenience. I showed you the catalog, and I deployed the project. That's it so far for this short talk. A few resources, and with that, we are in the end, and maybe we have one, two minutes more for some Q&A. Otherwise, thank you very much. There's one question. I'll just go pick the last one from Paul. Does it need any AEM activation to make the product live, or can it be made live directly with Magento? You have both options. Uh, the default scenario will be if you make it live in Magento, it will immediately show up on the AEM website. 
However, we support also combined workflows where you can do, as I said, you can also do the preview on the AM offer, maybe create even an AM launch for this new product, and then you set both live at the same time. But the simple use case, you just add it to your catalog, set it to live, and it will be available on the website. OK, I think we are up to time. And thank you very much again.